In that last one, we saw some of the built-in features of Django's project, right? We saw some of these components, also known as apps, that allowed us to have a user and an admin. Those two things are phenomenal. They're really easy to use and very user-friendly. Um, but what we want to do and the purpose of using Django is to build our own apps, our own components. Now, let's not confuse apps with like what's on your mobile phone. It's much more about just little pieces of this greater whole that is your web application. So let's go ahead and jump into the root of your Django project. I'm going to use that term a lot. The root of the Django project is referring to manage.py. So where manage.py is, assuming that you have your virtual environment activated, that's where you want to be. Whenever I say root of the Django project, I'm going to assume that that's the case. So I'm navigated there. And of course, this is where it's actually located on my system. It might be a little different for you. Um, if you don't know how to get there, just go back a few videos in this series. Um, it's linked below. Make sure that you watch some of the basic stuff there. Anyways, let's go ahead and create our own custom app. So I'm going to do Python manage.py, start app, and then whatever one want to name the app. Now, I'm going to go ahead and name it products. And you can do the same thing by pressing up and renaming it to blog. Or you could do it to profiles. Or you could do it to cart. Right? So I can name it all sorts of things, right? And honestly, those four names actually fit with like an e-commerce project, right? And if we look back into the code itself, you see that hey, I've now have all of this new code inside of the name of those different apps that I just created. Now, this does show us something that we could work towards. Like we could totally build an entire project that does all of these things. But also what it should illustrate to you is that each one of these apps should do one thing and one thing really well. Like the products app should really just do product related things, not cart related things. That should be separate. That should be in its own cart app. Uh, and we'll get to what that means later. But the idea here is that your app should be pretty narrow in focus. Once it starts to get wide, that's when you start to bring it into another app. And as you see, it's really, really easy to create an app. So there's really no reason to not do it other than perhaps laziness. And I want to avoid that in the long run for you. That's why I'm telling you about it now. Okay, so I want to show you how to use an app in the way of storing data, okay? The apps are really good for storing data and mapping what data you want to store to your database. So that means I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these other apps that I just created because we just simply don't need them um, because we're still learning, right? So I deleted, deleted these other ones and now I only have products. So opening up models.py. We'll talk about the other files later, but for now, just models.py. I want to store a product, right? So I want my backend to have memory of a product that I created. How do I do that? Well, I write a class called product. And in this class, I want it to have various attributes to it, right? So I want to say that it has a title. I want to say that it has a description. And, you know, perhaps that's it for now. Maybe I just want title and description. Maybe I want price too. Okay. So let's say title, description, and price. Now I want these mapped to the database. So how do I actually do that? Well, in Django, it's actually fairly straightforward. We use something called model fields. So models dot, we just type out models dot. It's already imported by default. And I'm going to just use text field for each one of these for now. We'll talk about more advanced fields later, but let's just use text field on each one. Okay. And then my product itself, the actual class that I'm using here, I needed to inherit from the default Django class of model. Okay. So this means that it's going to get a lot of features that we absolutely need to make this work that we just won't go into just yet. That's getting more advanced. But here is a very, very simple model called product. This will map to the database and we'll see that in just a moment. So since I created models.py and I created this app, I need to add the app in the settings installed apps. And that's really simple. I just put my own here and just write out products, the name of the app that I created, 
right? So that's the folder here. So I've got products, I have installed apps. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a comma after it. And now what do I do? I, of course, make sure that I save my settings.py and models.py. And now what I can run is this thing called make migration. So Python manage.py make migrations and then Python manage.py migrate. Okay, so those commands, you're definitely gonna to wanna to remember. So Python manage.py make migrations and then Python manage.py migrate. Okay, so the first time I did it, it made some changes. The second time I did it, um, it didn't do anything, right? So I, I wanna run these in, in conjunction with each other every single time I change models.py. So let's go ahead and add in another field here. And I'm just gonna say active, okay? Or let's just do summary instead of description, right? So we got description and summary. Those two might go hand in hand, but now I've made a change to the model, I saved it, and now I wanna run make migrations again. It's gonna ask me for basically a default. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say two for now. We'll get into that later. But I'm gonna go ahead and say default and say this is cool, exclamation mark, okay? So I run make migrations again, and then I run migrate again. Now, why the heck did I show you all that? Well, the main reason is to remember that we always wanna run make migrations and migrate when we make changes to models.py. Anytime, anyplace, anywhere. That is super, super important. Cool. So we've got this model now, and I wanna take a look at this model inside of the admin. So all I do here is go into admin.py and do from.models import product. So this is a what's called a relative import. It's importing the product class from the models.py. And it's relative because admin.py and models.py are on the same you know, directory. They're in the same module. So I can actually do that relative import. And all I do here is admin.site.register and product. We save that and with our server still running, I go back into my project, my Django admin. I now see this new thing here called products and I can add a new product, new description, some price and the summary. Hey, I've got my default in there saying this is cool. This is awesome. Hit exclamation mark, hit save. And there we go. We've now created a new product and it's saved in the database. Um, and and that's, the, that's really the core and the basics of it all. Right there, a basic model saved in the database. Now I can use this over and over again to save all kinds of data in the database. This is not a great model, I will say that. Like this is pretty limited in scope on how it is. We'll get into more advanced features of that later, but for now, that's pretty cool. That's all we have to do for a model. Um, that's it. So uh, what we still need to do is see how to do this in the Python shell. That is actually just using Python commands to save some stuff. That's something we'll do in the next one. So make sure you subscribe to get everything. Otherwise, we will see you next time.